Good morning. I hope that gives you a sense of what it was like at Passport for the week. We asked uh, each of the Passport participants to share something about the week that was meaningful to them or some part of the week that they enjoyed most of all. And one of our uh, Passport participants is not able to be here today, um, Leo, but he sent uh, this along for me to read to you. My favorite part of Passport was the civics activity. I liked it because you got to problem solve with your objectives. It also taught me how hard it is to be an immigrant in a new country and to not know the language. That helped me appreciate what I have in life even more. This was my second experience as a chaperone and my first as a group leader. The first thing that struck me was the energy and enthusiasm of the passport staff and the campers, which I think comes across in the video from beach balls and silly songs and games during morning worship to learning new songs and singing old passport favorites like My Lighthouse, which Vicky led us in singing this morning. It did my somewhat cynical, occasional pessimistic self good to be surrounded by so much hope and enthusiasm for a week. More than this, I want to share one experience that I did not anticipate going into the week. As you may know, most Sunday mornings, I'm in the production booth helping run sound and video for our live stream broadcast. That's something I began doing near the beginning of the pandemic, back when we started live streaming our service Sunday mornings with a single cell phone. I think you may remember those days. Soon after, we switched to recording our services on Saturdays using a camera and a microphone and editing and posting the recordings the following morning on Facebook and YouTube. Since then, we've invested in new cameras and a new sound system. Each step of the way, I've had to learn new skills, and some days and weeks, the learning curve has been steeper than others. For over two years, I've been in church more consistently than perhaps any other time in my life, Sunday after Sunday, though I haven't really been worshiping focused as I have been on the next camera angle, the quality of the sound, and the next problem to troubleshoot. So I was surprised to find myself during worship one day at Passport, overcome emotionally as we sang, Jesus Strong and Kind, which we're gonna sing a little later in the service. In that moment, I was reminded of this, as important as the things we do for Jesus are, we can get co so caught up in doing them that we lose sight of what he has done for us. And sometimes we even miss the joy of simply being amid the beauty of life around us. Thank you. I also went to Passport. My brothers all went to Passport, and I've wanted to go for a long time. I had fun meeting new people and trying out new things. My favorite part of the week was the recreation night. Good morning. This summer, I had the opportunity to participate in going to Passport as well. During my time at Passport, we did various activities to strengthen our faith. Every day, we had small groups where we would meet with different members of the other churches to talk about different sections of the Bible and what they meant. Some would lead to, how do we see this in our everyday lives, or what is the actual meaning of this verse? We would bond together and get to know each other better. In these small groups, we would spend most of our day at our mission sites. For my small group, our mission site would be that we made snack bags for the people at the center that we worked at. Others helped paint, and the rest helped with filing for administrators that needed our help. We had morning worship as well as evening worship every day. We would often share the meaning of the verse of the day. Our theme for this year was big. An example of a verse that we had learned was big community. That verse read, 
You are the body of Christ and parts of each other, 1 Corinthians 12 through 17. As well as various other activities, such as a rec party, dance party, a variety show, and lastly, a volleyball tournament. That part was my favorite. During this trip, I've learned that meeting different people who share the same faithfulness as me isn't as bad as I made it out to be. I often struggle with meeting and talking to new people, and this gave me an opportunity to allow myself to step out of my comfort zone, and that I'm really glad I can share this experience with my fellow church members. Thank you. Hey y'all, um, this was my third year at Passport. I had gone like a while back before quarantine started um, in middle school and I had a lot of fun. I learned about um, God's big impact and how he serves us in our communities. And what really impacted me was like Riley said, when we went to go to our mission site, we helped like adults, well we didn't help them, but we like made stuff for them, which is helping them. So we made stuff like, it was for adults with disabilities and it really just like, one was big impact and we made an impact on their lives. And another thing that I really enjoyed that I'm kind of upset that Curtis didn't record was when um, Riley and I were doing a PB&J dance um, in, early in the morning. And it was just really fun. And overall, I had a, a lot of fun learning about God's big impact in our lives. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Maggie Lusweti. This is my fifth passport, mission as a chaperon, and first time chaperoning without my kids in attendance. So this gave me really freedom. <laughs> God is more power to you. <laughs> I want to thank the church for sponsoring this mission, and I would like to thank the youth who attended passport I would like to thank Kara Ramsey Lucas for preparing healthy snacks for us, for all of us, and for providing us customized bottles like this one. It has my name on it. I've never had anything like this in my life, so thank you, Kara. <laughs> she did also provide us with UBC t-shirts. So it was great seeing Kimani and Riley on this mission. Um, they were simply amazing. Not sure they really needed me because they were quite independent and self-guided. I would like to thank Daniel and Leo for making your passport debut. I'm sure this is just the beginning and that you'll attend many more passports, passport camps. And thanks, Cadiz, for shepherding us through this mission trip, for driving us to passport and bringing us back safely. This year's passport themes were, as the kids mentioned, they were broken into four. There was the big God, the big faith, the big community, and the big impact. Passport activities are divided into four main categories. There is the morning devotion, the morning celebration, the youth study, the evening worship, and church devotion. And obviously there are breaks in between. Um, due to the COVID pandemic, mission work was restricted to just two days. So there were other exciting activities included, like the rake party, the decade dance party, and passport variety show, where campus volunteers to shine by sharing their talent for all to see. I enjoyed seeing young people learning from adults and adults learning from young people. It's amazing how we think that we are teaching kids, but these kids teach us more than we could ever imagine. Um, one of the best about passport chaperoning is learning about other Christians and their passion in doing God's work. Most of these chaperones are very committed, not just to chaperone, but they're also committed to growing spiritually, to learning more about God, to sharing their experiences during Bible study, morning, Bible study and morning devotion, during mission work, and helping their church kids who might be having their own personal struggles. Sometimes a child is just homesick and you have to take a break and, and, and help them navigate just being away from their parents. So 
it is quite um, an experience to see other people do it and do it with so much commitment and dedication as though these children are their own children. Well, they are their children, but they are not their biological children. My takeaways was that it was great to see young people singing, clapping, and dancing to the contemporary Christian song, My Lighthouse, which uh, Vicky uh, very well led us through. It has been the most popular song as long as I have attended Passport. It's very catchy, but the lyrics are just as powerful. If you listen to the l l lyrics, it really talks about the wrestles we have as human beings, the doubts we have in our lives, the failures that we have sometimes, but God helps us to walk through, and that's why they, we keep emphasizing my lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you, and I will trust the promise that you'll carry me through these difficult times. Our mission work was at a facility for people with disabilities. Uh, this is really my passion because really my, I'm really passionate about people with disabilities, so I was just where I, I was supposed to be. Um, our group prepared a variety of snacks while another group fixed the roof. Kimani and Riley assembled a stand. I guided a group of, a group of young people in repainting one of the roofs and showed them how to cover more surface area with a, hand, a handy roller. They were all great kids from another church and we had great rapport and had fun repainting the house. I would say the challenge at Passport was that I would consider it not disability compliant. Um, um, Greenboro College, I think Greensboro College, may have um, elevators, but they were not available. So I would imagine if we had a camper with a disability, how would they navigate their way in and out of the building? Maybe that's something they, they did because they didn't have somebody with a disability. But I often thought about what if a chaperone had a disability? How would they navigate their way up and down the stairs? So that was my, uh, my challenge. Uh, my takeaway during mission work was the importance and power of youth seeing and interacting with God-fearing role models. Passport's commitment to student participation from workshops, celebration, mission work, Bible study is admirable. This is vital that students are given a chance to lead, learn, and engage while being rooted and grounded in God's love. What really touched me most was the third day sermon. It was a, the theme was about the big community. And as Kimani said, the verse of the day was the theme. The theme verse was 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27, which says, you are the body of Christ and parts of each other. The pastor referenced Ubuntu, which is an African word that emphasizes human virtues, compassion, humanity, and not vengeance. For a second, I thought about Ubuntu, a free and open, open source co operating system designed by a South African named Mark Shuttleworth. In the pastor's words, in preaching of Ubuntu, your actions affect my actions, your inactions affect my inactions, my actions affect your actions, and vice versa. In the big community, we are not just joining together in shared activities or similar interests. It's not that we live in the same place or have similar religion, religious tradition. Rather, our whole lives are knit together as one big community in Christ. Throughout our lives, we learn to live mutually and in interdependently. United by God in Christ, we join hands and hearts in discipleship and service. The fourth theme of was the big impact, which is in First Peter chapter four, verse ten. Verse ten, it says, "Each of you has been blessed with one of God's many wonderful gifts to be used in the service of others. So use your gift well." The question was, how might this passage help you, your youth, your church, your group, your family, or your community? How will it help you make a big impact in the world? Prayerfully, we, co we consider three categories for our lives, resources, opportunities, and limitations. We all have different gifts and talents. God asks who are skillful amongst us to, willing to willingly offer our skills, our talents, our knowledge, to faithfully serve God, to serve others, to serve God, and to serve the world. When we come forward to serve, 
our hearts are stirred and our spirit is willing. Our impact can be expansive and far-reaching when we come together to share God's love creatively and meaningfully with the world. We can make a change that ripples out into the world. A change that ripples out into the world. Even when God comes to us in a small moment, the change within us extends beyond us because of how interconnected we are as a body of Christ. And I try to link this to Luke chapter 13, verse 18 to 21, which says, we do start out as small, we do start out small like the mustard seed and the living. As small as a mustard seed is, or as little as a measure of yeast is, given the proper condition, both produce, both produce great growth and transformation. Small changes in life can lead to something great in due course. My prayer is that God will guide us to be open to the change he desires of us, that in turn we may be living and mustard seeds in our society for the proclamation of his kingdom. Lastly, may we be committed to seeking God's direction in responding to how we can use our gifts and talents to be impactful in this world. Thank you. Curtis, and wow, I cannot believe that Kimani and Riley are the age and size you are now. <laughs> I just still remember you sitting over there and me trying to do a children's sermon. <laughs> wow. Well, it's been, it was five years and four months ago, March 7th, of 2017, that as a congregation, we embarked on a journey together to serve our partners in Hungary and to see what God would do with us. And so um, I am going to just try to encapsulate five years of service following God faithfully um, in my sharing. I'm going to share from three perspectives. I'll share from the school perspective. I'll share a little bit from Tabitha House perspective. And I will share a little bit with you about um, living in Hungary with the Ukrainian war being next door. So I will try to keep it brief. I, I do understand the time. Um, so I'm not quite technologically savvy. And when I was growing up, we did show and tell. <laughs> so I brought my show and tell. And you can have an opportunity to look at it. And this is show and tell. And I'll tell you a little bit about this as well. So um, first of all, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, Ev for how grateful I am that you were willing as a congregation to believe and stand with me. I also want to um, give special thanks to Jeanette Holt and to Mary Bow. They're the only two I see here who were part of, uh, oh, I'm sorry, and Rowan. Would you guys stand up? I'm sorry, John, I didn't see you either. This is the pit crew. And when I left on March 7th, they were part of my team that was commissioned with me for the field. And so faithfully, every month, they met with me. Um, so they know intimate details of what life and ministry was like in Hungary. My ministry was a ministry to children and families with special needs. I left here with the idea, the thought that I was going as a school chaplain. 
Now, I know that that conjures a whole different way of thinking, particularly from our American context. As God does, God showed up faithfully and made it what God wanted it to be. I'm so grateful that I was able to say, yes, Lord, here I am, as the song that we sang at my commissioning service. I recently had a chance to look at that, and I was just like, wow, God, okay. So um, I served at Tabitha, I mean, at Panam Hami Bela Ishkola School, and in that school, it is a school of about 100 students, and they are children who have special needs, special needs primarily related to learning dip difficulties. No, I'm not a teacher by education, but I am a teacher by God's grace, and my children taught me that. Our children had challenges with autism. They had challenges with dyslexia. They had challenges with hyperactivity disorder. They had challenges with attention deficit disorder. So you can imagine what a classroom could look like. <laughs> but you know, I, the one thing that I want to make sure that you hear from me is that one, it matters who shows up when you're vulnerable. And that is the gift and the grace that I feel like God um, gave and used in me. Our children were vulnerable in part because of these dis difficulties, but also they were vulnerable because in a post-communist society, it is not uncommon for um, children who have disabilities to be pushed to the margins. And so because of that, I was able to be there to be an encouraging voice because of you. What did that look like? Well, it looked like I was in the classroom teaching English. Um, I was also there participating in special school activities and with holidays and in summer camps. My own personal passport <laughs> all year long. Um, for the school activities, there were many activities where the children were given opportunity to go to different places. Like one time we went to a bakery, there were, and they learned and had opportunity to do things baking with their hands. Um, there were opportunities where we had school programs, where we had programs um, where they had the opportunity to dress up and to use their creativity and different things like that. We also had a school, what's called um, an after-school English club, where we were able to spend a lot of time doing special activities, taking them out for meals, taking them um, different places, and giving them an opportunity to use some of the skills that they were learning in the school. And then there were holidays. Uh, the one thing that makes me really uh, smile and makes me feel very happy is that because I was there, my children saw, and many of their parents, saw a whole turkey for the first time on the table as we see it um, and we know it here as part of our Thanksgiving. So that was a real, real joy for me. Also, um, one of the things that was important was we would do different programs. And, and as you can see, I have on this medallion um, or necklace. It was specially made for me. It was made because at one of our last school activities where we had a program where um, the children were all performing I was asked to pray, 
and I prayed for the children and the family, and one of the judges was or is an artist, and he actually made this because of the prayer that he heard me pray over our children. And so I um, really feel very blessed because part of it, the interior part of this, is from uh, remnants from pieces that were saved for, from a restoration of one of the churches in Hungary. And so it, it's really near and dear to my heart. Um, Tabitha House, I'd like to talk a little bit about now, um, was a ministry of presence. And in Tabitha House, it's a home for children who have severe and physical life-limiting um, disabilities. And in, at the home, these children are brought by their parents and they are there uh, usually for five to seven days at a time and then the parents have an opportunity to go and do whatever it is they need or want to do um, while we take care of their children. I saw God show up in this ministry in a major way and in that you heard me say parents usually drop their children off for five to seven days. Well, God opened the door for children um, who had no parents to drop them off because they were abandoned and they had severe physical mental disabilities, expected to die very, very shortly. Our program was not designed for 24 hours ongoing care like that but God opened the door and we were able to receive a couple of children on an extended basis because they were abandoned with these severe physical and mental disabilities that was really significant to me spiritually to see the scripture come alive um, where, where the scripture tells us not to worry and that God takes care of and that God does not forsake. And these children were the most vulnerable ever. And to see God also provide for them in their deaths. So I want to say again, and I can't say it enough, so please hear me when I tell you thank you. Thank you for allowing and being a partner in this ministry. And finally, let me just share a little bit about the Ukrainian war. Um, Hungary is a border to Ukraine, and there were um, people fleeing Ukraine. And notice I did say people, because that's an important distinction that I will make that people were fleeing Ukraine primarily into Hungary and into Poland. They were going elsewhere, but those were the two primary places that they have been and were coming into. Well, I was attending at that time a church um, that had a ministry to international students, and we were aware that there were many um, people who were coming into Hungary. We had not made any specific plans. And on the second week of the war, we were called by one of our international students to say, I'm at the train station and there are about 17 students here who have nowhere to go. Well, what that meant was we have, I'm standing here looking at 17 African students who have nowhere to go. We were not prepared in any kind of way for this, um, but, but God, but God. Only thing we had was a church with movable, uh, a church uh, sanctuary 
much about the size of ours, but we had movable chairs. Our initial response was we don't have anything and the international students said they have nowhere to go. So what it meant was bring them, we'll be there. Only thing we had on that first night to offer was a roof over their heads and a, a Wi-Fi that they could use so that they could tell parents and family and connect with one another, I've made it someplace safe. And the next day, literally the scripture that says the windows of heaven opened up, I am telling you, the windows of heaven opened up and there was a blessing that was greater than we were able to receive. We literally received all of the air mattresses that we needed. We received all of the sheets, towels, blankets that we needed for these children to be able, and I'm sorry, they're young people, these young people to be able to sleep and be safe in addition, all of the food that we needed. Well, fast forward, the government did some changes and ultimately they, they were all placed in various um, facilities. And in the placement, many of the African students and students in general were placed in um, dormitories that had no cooking facilities. Basically, they had um, a microwave and a refrigerator. That was it. And again, the windows of heaven opened up and we were able to contract, my church was able to contract with um, a small African business to provide food for these students that was a taste of home for them. And I can tell you now that many of the students, because they were third country nationals, um, have left Hungary because they, are not, they were not being given the extended um, residence permits, even though many um, have applied for schools in Hungary, they had to leave. So some have gone home, some have gone to other countries like Portugal, um, Netherlands, who are giving um, and honoring the EU mandate that people be given longer residence permits. It's important that you understand what I just said because many of you are seeing reports and things about Hungary in the news about Hungarian government not being open to immigrants. And I'm telling you that's true. So those are the things that I'd like to be able to tell you about. So you're probably now wondering what's next, Carmela? Well, <laughs> I am home on what is called the home um, U.S. Puerto Rico assignment. They didn't send me to Puerto Rico. I don't know why, <laughs> but I'm home, um, and I have established um, housing in Silver Spring, and what this means is, is that during this time, I will be sharing um, with churches, so I'll be going to many, many churches, sharing with them much of what I've shared with you today about the ministry that I have been doing in Hungary. I left Hungary um, knowing that uh, there's many more things that can be done. During this time, this year, I work with International Ministries, our partner, um, in terms of evaluating, assessing what's next and what is the next step. Do I want to go back to Hungary? I know that my heart is truly tied there. My heart is tied to Hungary. Um, but we have to see what God says and what God will do in this time that I am uh, here going through various um, 
assessment stuff as well as debriefings and just looking at what God has done and discerning what God is calling for next in my ministry. So two things. One, anybody who wants to have lunch with me, who wants to meet with me to talk and to see pictures, my show and tell goods, uh, please reach out. I'd love to sit and share more detailed um, uh, about my experience in Hungary. Also, um, in this year, I do continue to need your support for the ministry um, and my going and doing and all of that. So thank you for being financial partners, and I ask you to continue to be uh, supportive in that way. Thank you. Before you go sit down, oh. we, we had this cross on our communion table for the five years you were gone and people could come up and hold it and pray for you. And we have done that for five years. We're going to give this now to you to carry with you and to be reminded of our prayers wherever this journey takes you next. It's been an honor to be a partner with you in all this. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I'll give it back to you if the Lord says I'm going back. Okay. Well, all right. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll take it back. <laughs> what a blessing it is to know that our church is uh, reaching out in so many different ways. Uh, the teenagers did a great job, good job. Uh, Riley said, I don't know how you do this every day, every Sunday, stand up in front of there, but she did great. Everybody did great. Uh, and we're a part of that mission. Uh, you know, it costs $425 per kid to go to Passport, uh, except they only have to pay 100 because the church picks up the rest and their fundraising picks up the rest. And it's an honor for us to be able to do that, and we're grateful. So you're part of that, too, whether you've been to Passport or not. Would you join with me now in reading the Confession and Assurance of Pardon as we read our own commitment to mission work? In the dark print on the right side of the bulletin, would you read with me? Thank you, Lord, for the invitation to do big things for you. Forgive us for playing small and avoiding the large investments of time, energy, and resources that make life worth living. 